Hey brother! Okay, so I know The Incredibles 2 doesn't come out until 2019, which if you ask me is a little late. 15 years too late. But 1072 days and counting! In any case, I don't think it's too early to start speculating about it, especially since you made an entire video about Syndrome earlier this week. So today I will be counting down the top 5 potential candidates for villains in The Incredibles 2. <laughs> The Underminer! Not him. Brad Bird, director of the film, has stated that he wants the movie to remain family oriented. And that's not to say that he wants it targeted at families, but to be centralized around the concept of family. That's why The Incredibles is so good. It's not really a superhero movie. It's a movie about families and all of the problems that families go through, and just applying that to a family that just so happens to have superpowers. As such, the villain is almost definitely going to be somehow connected to the pars, and not just some random villain that's introduced wanting to take over the world, such as the Underminer. Also, we don't know this for sure, but I doubt this movie is going to pick up exactly where the other one left off. It could take place as far as 15 years into the future, and I really don't think it's going to take the Incredible Family 15 years to defeat the Underminer. Number four, Syndrome's father. Okay, as you pointed out on Tuesday, Syndrome definitely has some daddy issues. Am I good enough now? You can't count on anyone, especially your heroes. Make sure his mom knows what he's been doing. I'll be a bigger hero than you ever were. Clearly didn't have a father figure as a kid, which is why he was so obsessed with Mr. Incredible. But it begs the question, what did happen to his father? Why wasn't he there? What if he wanted to be there, but couldn't be? Because he was being exploited for his genius. We learn in The Incredibles just how valuable this kind of intellect is to other countries. Turns out there are a lot of people, whole countries, who want respect. What if his father was forced away from his family in order for someone to capitalize on that intelligence? This would explain Syndrome's brilliance. It's made very clear that Syndrome is not a super, but clearly anyone who can make working rocket boots as a child is not your average genius. I'm thinking intelligence like that has got to be genetic. Suppose his father is working for the US government and watching his son rise to success from afar, only to be killed and have his murderers celebrated as heroes by the very people that forced him away from his family in the first place. Yeah, I think we have motive. Number three, Zarek. Wait, who? Zarek was originally going to be the main villain in The Incredibles, but was replaced by Syndrome mid-production. The character was later used in The Incredibles' short-lived comic book series where he is the main villain, and it is revealed that he is the ex-boyfriend of Elastigirl. Whether it's Zarek himself or not, I like the idea of Helen's ex being a character that makes Mr. Incredible jealous. It kind of flip-flops the roles played in the first movie. This also plays into the pattern Pixar has of focusing their sequel on a sidekick character, such as Mater, Mike, or Dory. Although to be fair, Helen is the least sidekicky of those characters. Dear Cars 3, please be about lightning again. This also plays into our theory that the main villain will have a vendetta against the Incredibles in particular. And just like in the original, it will mean that they will have created their own worst enemy. Plus, in the comics, Zarek suffers from an unexplained condition that causes him to age at a dramatic rate. This could easily allow for a plot twist involving a villain that we would not believe to be connected to the Parr family in any way, but revealed during his inevitable monologuing. You Hey dog, you got me monologue! Can't you just see one of those classic Incredibles generic family style fights amidst pending death? Expected danger, why'd you bring them? I didn't bring them, they start away, and I don't think you're striking the proper tone here. Zarek, your crazy ex-boyfriend? You're making it worse, Bob. I don't want to brag, but I think I uh nailed that Elastigirl impression. Also, Pixar has been known to bench characters from their early version, only to bring them back later in sequels. For example, Lotso was supposed to be used in the original Toy Story, but didn't really make sense until Toy Story 3. Although you can actually still see the earliest version of him on the shelf in Toy Story. Number two, Syndrome, again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Does that mean we think it's possible that he could have survived this explosion? 
No. The theory here is that Syndrome, before his demise, uploaded his consciousness to a computer and continues to live on as a machine. Clearly, he was making remarkable strides in the field of artificial intelligence. It is not beyond the scope of believability to assume that it's possible that he could have uploaded his brain to a computer to continue on in the event that he was physically unable. After all, he doesn't really fear fighting Mr. Incredible, despite idolizing him and giving him the highest threat rating in his computer. Maybe that's because he's confident, or maybe that's because he knows physical harm really isn't a threat. Although, still obviously not something that anybody actually enjoys. <laughs> The trick here is that if he was a digital consciousness, it would be very easy to hide his true identity. But he would still need a physical person to help him carry out his plans, and we have a theory as to who he might choose, but more on that in a second. Number one. One of the kids. First, Violet. Kinda doubt it, but there's still a string you can pull on here. As far as we know, most of the supers have been eradicated, and the Par kids are the only ones of their age. So if this movie is going to take place 15 years into the future, it is very possible for us to meet their significant other, who are most likely not going to be supers. Pair that with Violet's desire to be normal in the first movie before she is forced into all the action. I Lady. act normal, mom. I want to be normal. This could be an avenue for a civilian, huh? Huh? to gain access to the Parr family. Or at the very least, she could choose normalcy over the super life, which certain family members may take issue with. Which brings us to Dash. Dash is certainly a little bit of a front runner. Ah. Ah. Uh. Ha! Dash. Flash. Works on so many levels. This is where Digital Syndrome needing a physical person to carry out orders comes into play. Dash is arrogant and a little bit of a troublemaker. He's guilty! You can see it on his smug little face! He even states the same sentiments as Syndrome in the first movie. Everyone special, Dash. Which is another way of saying no one is. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. I personally think that his want to stand out in sports is going to transfer into a want to stand out in the family. As Dash ages into his prime and gets better and better at being a superhero, his parents will be getting older. And the trouble with being in a family business is that it's really difficult to ever outrank your parents. I mean, what even is the average retirement age for a super? I could see a situation where Dash acts independently in a team situation and puts everyone else in danger, even if he ultimately ends up saving the day. Where Dash sees himself kind of as the hero, but the rest of the team is very angry and frustrated at him for putting them all in jeopardy. Parents, am I right? They never let me be the hero. His arc could even match his father's from the first movie where some unknown technology arrives and starts whispering all of his desires into his ear. But plot twist, it's digital syndrome. What better way for a guy with daddy issues to get back at his greatest adversary than by taking him down with his own son? But let's not forget, Bob has two sons. <laughs> Jack-Jack could also make a pretty good villain. He's off screen for most of the first movie, which gives us very little pre-existing character development. The real team in The Incredibles is the Fantastic Four, so having them fight the fifth member of the family would keep the team the same. And I'm betting Jack-Jack could take them all at once, because it seems like he has like a bazillion powers. Laser eyes, levitation, portals, fire body, metal body, monster body. And that last one there, monster body, is what I believe could be the potential loose cannon. Possibly a Jack-Jackal and Mr. Hyde situation. Where maybe the family, including Jack-Jack, don't know who is causing a series of crimes, but Plot twist, it's 
Jack Jack the whole time. And there you go, my top five or seven if you count all three kids, potential villains for The Incredibles 2. For my question of the day, what do you guys think? Which one of these could be the potential villain or which storyline do you like the best? Be sure to leave your thoughts in the towel section down below. Guys, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see more Incredibles content from us, you can click right here to see the top 10 reasons why Syndrome is the best Pixar villain, or click right here to find out how the Incredibles got their powers. But Jay, that is everything that I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.